there is a fight in the Wolfmuller house. That's that's more maybe like a dis, maybe more like a dispute about haircuts. Carrie, I want my hair to be short enough that I don't have to mess with it. And Carrie wants it to be long enough to cover up all the growing bald spots. In fact, I think every time she cuts my hair, there's like mourning. She thinks it's never going to grow back. Okay, here's an experiment I want to try. This box here is where I put all the ideas that I don't want to forget. So it's organized by topic, alphabetically, etc. And they go on these cards. Th these are the ones to file. I've actually got a lot uh, to put in there. But um, it's nice for me to go back and look at them and say, hey, oh, that's what I was thinking about a couple of years ago. In fact, I had an idea of doing like a year end review, pulling the top 20 cards from last year, but didn't do it. But here, so here's the idea is I'm going to pick a random spot, blam, and pull a card and talk about it. Now, if this works, then you're seeing the video. <laughs> Look at that. This is point six of what is this? Wow. Uh, Luther, the history of the world is the persecution of the justified by the self-justifier. Consider Paul, Galatians 4.29, the son of the slave woman persecuted him who was born of the promise. And this is an amazing thing, actually, that um, when Luther looks back at history, he sees it in terms of the tale of two brothers. Cain and Abel, Isaac and Ishmael, uh, th that's what's going on in Paul. All the way through, uh, Jesus and the Pharisees, Paul and the Judaizers, John and the Gnostics, the, uh, the Lutherans and the Romanists. It's always this, this tale of two cities or tale of two brothers. And so the history of the world is this, these two brothers fighting with each other. And the difference between the two, the difference between Cain and Abel, the difference between Isaac and Ishmael, remember Galatians 4, is the difference between justification and self-justification, what we might call faith and works. All of us are born with this sort of native instinct to self-justify. In fact, every person that you meet is in one way or another um, trying to make the case for their own existence. I mean, it, it's almost as if the people who invented social media just were able to tap into this thing because now you can not only self-justify, you can project your own case. Here's the case for my meaning and for my existence and for my beauty and for my goodness, and I can project it all to the world. And we're, we're just... We're built for that. So Cain and Abel came to offer sacrifices, remember? And and Cain came to offer the sacrifice of the field. This is what Adam was a gar gardener. Uh, so Cain, the oldest son, inherits the family business. He was the one who was keeping people alive. Agriculture, uh, I mean farming especially, was uh, was the way that they could establish cities because they had fields and they were cultivated. They weren't out in the woods like Abel with the animals, which would only be used for sacrifice and for clothing. Presumably, they weren't even authorized to eat the animals. And so Cain offers the clean, nice-smelling, unbloody, beautiful sacrifice without the word of God. And Abel offers the sacrifice with blood according to the word of God. That, that's why it was an offering of faith. Faith clings to the word. So Abel clung to the word. He wasn't clinging to his own righteousness and his own efforts, but to the promise. God accepts the offering of Abel, not of Cain. And so Isaac and Ishmael, same thing. Paul in Galatians 4 says, here's the allegory. You have the child of the free woman and the child of the slave. You have the child of works. You have the child of the promise. And and the child of, of works persecutes the child of promise. 
And Paul says the same thing's happening today. The Jerusalem from below, that's the Judaizers and the Pharisees who are busy self-justifying, are persecuting those who receive the justification from the Lord. Now, here's the main thing, I suppose. And and so to understand, now the amazing, and this is what the, whoops, Uh uh-oh, okay. I thought it fell into the wrong spot and I would never find it. This is what the card is about, is that, is that Luther understands world history in terms of this fight between the justified and the self-justified. Amazing. Now, for us, the main thing is to know that we are the justified. We are not busy making the case of our own righteousness. We are clinging to Christ and his perfection and his holiness, his peace, his blood, his victory, his sacrifice. This is our life. This is our peace. And God be praised. Hey, that's pretty cool. Uh, we need a name for this segment. Saturday morning note grab. Theology grab bag. If you have ideas for the segment, then you can post them up below if it's helpful or not. Thank you. I remember one time uh, I had my collar on and I went to a funeral that I wasn't conducting. I was just going to a funeral. And... Uh, Everyone thought I was the pastor because the pastor didn't have a collar on. So I looked more like the pastor than the pastor there. And the family kept coming up to me asking questions and, and guests and visitors. I didn't even, wasn't my church. I, I didn't even know where the bathrooms were and everyone thought I was in charge. So anyway, I'm undercover now when I go to funerals. That's what's going on.